Eyes, The Black Critic Guy, and oh boy am I super excited for this video, as I'm bringing back an old favorite that I used to do quite often on this channel that many people might still remember, called Why I Won't Watch, a series in which I detail all the reasons as to why I won't watch a certain movie, anime, TV show, or what have you. And to kickstart the revival of this beloved series, I'll be detailing my reasons as to why I will not be watching the upcoming film that I know a lot of us have been pleading, begging, and asking for for the last, I guess, 11 years, because that was the last time that I ever heard about an Oceans movie called Oceans 8. Well, let's not beat around the bush. Let's actually dive into the reasons why I won't watch this film. I absolutely despise everything that this film stands for from the bottom of my heart. And what exactly are the things that it stands for? Well, let me tell you. Number one, it's clearly agenda-driven rather than being a story that somebody wanted to tell. And you know how I know this? Because the film wasn't made because they came up with an interesting story because the story is basically a rehash of the first film. It was made to push the false narrative that there just isn't enough women in film. There aren't a lot of female-led films. There aren't a lot of female-led franchises. So we have to take well-established franchises that had primarily males at the center of it and replace them with females because that's going to really prop them up. That's going to really help women, you know, get their own franchises by stealing somebody else's franchise. That's how you be progressive. That is the kind of delusional bullshit that films like Ocean's 8 and Ghostbusters 2016 like to pretend is an actual thing. That is until you do some research into film history and realize that that is such a false claim. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to sit back, relax, and just roll out a couple of titles of films and franchises led by females. Enjoy. an all-female cast for the sake of having an all-female cast. It's not because they were the best people for these particular roles, like they just had open casting and it just so happened that it was a bunch of females that got the lead roles, so it became an all-female cast. No, when they announced that they were making this film, they announced it as being an all-female Oceans film. They already went in with the intention of making it all-female just to pander to a demographic, an audience that particularly doesn't even give a shit about movies like this. They don't want to see a movie like this. If they did, they would just go see the originals or they would be demanding it. What woman in America, or you know what, what woman in the entire world was demanding that you remake or this is actually a spin-off, but what woman out there was demanding you to do an all-female Oceans film? Can I have a show of hands? How many women out there were sitting in their rooms one day and said, you know what would be a great idea? An all-female Oceans film. Wouldn't that be badass? And by the way, and I'm addressing my female audience when asking this question, I truly would love to know your thoughts and opinions on this. Don't you feel a little demeaned and insulted that Hollywood feels the need to pander and baby you by giving you these token films to show that they're progressive, that they're open-minded. But instead of giving you wholly original films, vehicles that star women that is clearly their own, they decide to hijack established properties and just put women in them. You don't feel that's kind of insulting? You don't think that's kind of like, really, you, you can't just think of an original story, come up with an original concept starring women? We, we have to take established properties and just put women in them because apparently women can't carry their own film. They, it needs to have some type of established property in order for it to work. 
Are you fucking joking? You want a good example of a film with an all-female cast that doesn't bank on an existing franchise and doesn't come off as pandering? No lie. Annihilation. Annihilation is smart, well-written, interesting characters, intense, gripping, there's a purpose for all the characters in the film, and it doesn't matter that they're all female. That's a fine example of how to utilize an all-female cast without it feeling like some type of agenda. I kind of feel bad that I didn't do a review for that film when it first came out, because it is an excellent film, one of the best films of the year. To me, films like Ocean's 8 is just insulting to my intelligence and to me as an individual. Number three, and this also ties into number one and two, last one I promised, it's another example of forced diversity, and I've already mentioned in my Star Wars The Last Jedi video, forced diversity is not good diversity. Again, it comes off as an example of tokenism. And the fourth and final thing that Ocean's 8 stands for, that I personally cannot stand, it's a blatant cash grab. It's obvious to everyone! You are clearly trying to milk off of the franchise. You are banking your success based off of the popularity of the Ocean's trilogies in the early 2000s and trying to sucker people who were fans of the originals to watch this film. I mean, let's just be honest, you're basically rehashing the story of the first film. And speaking of that... No lie, guys. The actual premise to Ocean's 8 follows Danny Ocean from the original trilogy's estranged sister. Yup, you heard me right. His estranged sister. Which is obviously a cheap and lazy ploy to explain why we never heard Danny ever bring up the fact that he had a sister in any of the previous films. In fact, I don't even recall him mentioning if he had any siblings. But this was a way to give them an out to explain why we never heard of her before. Oh, she's his estranged sister. They were never that close. They had a falling out and he never wanted to think about her or talk about her again. That's why you never heard of her before, but now she exists. Give me a break. And she comes up with the original idea of pulling a heist, but then instead of you know, robbing a casino, she's gonna rob a Met Gala. And she forms a team of ladies to pull off this heist. Gee, you know, that, that sounds oddly familiar. You know, I feel like I've seen this type of story before back in uh, 2001, although replace the gala with uh, a casino. I can see it now. All of the events that transpire in Ocean's 8, which I will detail for you right now. And if you've seen the film and are watching this video, do let me know. Did I nail it? If I didn't, I'll own up and say I got it wrong. That's not what the film was actually like. But if I got it right, I called it. I called it before even seeing the damn film. That's how obvious it was to me. So the film's gonna open up with, of course, Danny's sister, probably talking to some celebrity or something, you know, looking all cool and suave, and then she's gonna come up with the plan of robbing the Met Gala, teams up with their old partner in crime, uh, Kate Blanchett's character, and they decide to assemble a team of skilled individuals who are masters at robbing and stuff, or maybe they even have a personal connection with them. They do a whole montage where they're preparing, planning out their scheme, planning out all the details of how they're going to do the robbery, how they're going to pull this heist off, but halfway through the film we're going to discover that Danny's sister has an ulterior motive for robbing the gala, a personal reason for robbing the gala, which causes a riff between her and Kate Blanchett because she's like, you lied to me, why didn't you tell me that was the plan from the beginning? You, this goes against the plan entirely, this is a whole new ballpark. But they still push forward on the plan, some things go awry, it seems like they're not gonna get away with it, but surprise, surprise, it's a big twist at the end to show you how they actually pulled off the gala, the gala heist, and they get away scot-free, happily ever after, off to the sunset, and then Matt Damon will show up sometime, maybe, I want to say near the end, I don't think he's going to show up in the middle of the film. I want to say he's near the end. That's the only one I'm not sure of, but that is exactly how this film's going to go down. And you know how I know that? Because that's exactly the way the first film went. And considering that the premise is oddly familiar, in fact, very similar to the first film, 
I have a strange feeling that that's how this film's going to unfold too. Which begs the question, why bother? If you're just going to rehash the same movie, just watch the original. It's still good, it still holds up. The movie's not even 20 years old yet. It, come on, man, why even? If, if you were gonna do this, at least do something different. You know, as much as many people didn't like the sequels to Ocean's Eleven, I personally liked Ocean's Twelve because it was a more global thing. They did something different each film. Why is this just a rehash of the same film? Like, wh what's even the point now? And I guess the last reason why I won't watch Ocean's Eight is due to its lackluster trailers. Every trailer I've seen for this film, every promotional material, every TV spot, hell, I saw a special clip for the film, I believe, during Game 2 of the NBA Finals, and each time I was none too impressed. What they showed me didn't compel me to want to see the film. If anything, it worked against the film as it convinced me to stay away from it. It did more to repel me than to interest me. And those, ladies and gentlemen, were my reasons as to why I won't watch Ocean's 8 this weekend. But I'm not the end-all be-all opinion when it comes to this film. I'm sure there are plenty of you out there that are looking forward to seeing this film and will probably watch it on opening day. And there might be a few of you who agree with my opinion. So do let me know in the comments where you stand on Ocean's 8. Are you excited to see it? Are you a fan of the franchise and you want to see what they're going to do next? Or you like me and find it completely unnecessary, you don't like what it stands for, and the trailers did not do anything to impress you. In fact, it turned you away from the film entirely. Comment below, let me know, and hopefully I'll have that anime review that I was supposed to have out on Tuesday out this weekend. And of course, I have my live chat coming up tomorrow, guys. 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you better be there. I'm gonna also check my bell box to see if I got any letters. If I did, I'll read them for you guys. If not, it's just gonna be a regular live chat. But as always, guys, if you like to see more videos of the channel, be part of the Black Critic Crew, please hit that subscribe button below. Like this video if you really enjoyed it. And I'm Tony Wild II, the misogynist, sexist bigot known as the Black Critic Guy. Till then, peace, YouTube.